Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It is Sunday, and it has kind of turned into only one of day this week. Um, we had fewer requests for it. In fact, that's what we're going to do right now. Thank you, Shan, for your suggestion. I know you had a big old list of things. In fact, I can actually pull up your comment right now. Uh, yeah, minis are... Doing entire album listens as viewer requests is, like, I appreciate that you want to, like, watch me listen to an album for 30 minutes, but I just... One, I can't focus all that time into one project, uh, or at least, like, multiple projects without being in, like, my mindset for it. But also, like, I've been taking song requests from a lot of people, or from everyone so far, so I've only felt fair to take a song. So... We're going to take your request for, um, well, I know Libido already. I've never seen the MV4, but I do know the song. But I don't know Skins, so we're going to check out Skins today. And yes, that is the play of the day today. Once again, thank you all for your viewer requests. It's been real good fun just seeing all the really wide variety of stuff coming in. Like we had... We had some requests bouncing off of other artists we've checked out in the past. There's a couple new ones on the scene. There's a couple covers. There's a couple older songs. There's a couple new songs. And it's quite interesting. So, only one of skins. Um, actually, let's let's pull up the blurb. Because there are... Uh, only one of has blurbs at the bottom of the videos, don't they? There's a black white side gauge Oh, female, all that is your, your skin doesn't matter. All that matters is you. Hell yes. We love that message. Absolutely. freaking lutely You know what? I'm feeling pumped up, amped up, and ready to go. So let's just send it. Oh, I don't like the nails on the ground. Okay. Quite a crunchy introduction. Okay, I should probably pay attention to the lyrics too, hold on. What a transition into the melodic. Interesting choice doing a 4-3 MV as well. Oh. oh, this is... Ooh, okay. So there are melodic elements to it, but it's all based on this really crunchy bottom beat. Interesting MV choice of featuring a lot of slow-mo, like almost beauty shots of two members at a time. Like, usually, apart from the choreo, it's only two members at a time. I think that's an interesting choice. This pre-chorus is... Almost entrancing, like the notes being used in it. And then it is crunchy in the chorus. Let me actually. Hold on, let me try and find the rhythm again. Where is it? Oh no, I can't find it. There it is. Ooh. Yeah, 
drop the register on this final chord. Okay. I'm expecting a big hit coming up. There it is. Oh my. The hip thrusting. Ah. No warning. Absolutely no warning. Oh, that was a short final chorus. I thought it was going to go for maybe one more cycle or something. And then it all loops back at the end? Huh. I'll admit the MV storyline is completely lost on me, mainly because I... I tend to get distracted with the music. And, like, in the occasional time that I did clock back on with the MV, there was a whole lot of stuff going on that I just could not keep up with. But the song itself is... I'm so... intrigued by what goes on in, like, the music process of, like... or, like, the production and, like, the composition behind on only one of his music. Because it's... Seemingly, they couldn't have approached this in a traditional like music composition way because it doesn't use really traditional like pop song formulas in the way the song structure is roughly the same like you have your verse pre-chorus chorus rinse and repeat verse two and then you have bridge and final chorus like that's pretty much the same across the board but what they're doing with it is so interesting is it's once again the whole kind of experimental thing for me because they do have a, enough of a melodic element for me to think, like, okay, there's something really interesting going on, like, melodically. And then they go into this very rhythm-heavy... Like, out of all the songs we've checked out here so far, the chorus for this song is probably the most industrial, like, crunchy-sounding chorus I've heard. And it's an interesting offset based off of the really melodic pre-chorus it does, because the pre-chorus really stands out, and it's a really big switch up to the rest of the song. Like, let's go actually, let's go back to it. Fear. Like, already up until that point, the chords they're using do not follow standard, like, pop song chord sequences. Like, uh, I made it short about it, uh, using two, like, using Umbi's OST and an old Eyes One song. It kind of explains how, like, sometimes you get songs that sound very similar because the chords are the same and they flow, they flow the same. This song isn't using a very familiar chord sequence at all, and it's it's not using standard chords. It's using a lot of modified chords and things like that, which from a musically, like, from a traditional musical composition point of view, is really interesting. Like little modified chords here and there really spice up the song because it breaks them apart from the traditional, say, like one four five one chord sequence or whatnot. But the weird the kind of a funky sound of synths they have in the background not like funk as in genre but funk as in like kind of weird for sound their synth sound they're using in the background is a really nice switch up because it provides a lot more of a twinkling effect compared to the really crunchy beat of the verse and the chorus that one note is so cool it remind like the note itself it reminds me of it reminds me of something queen used to do with some of their songs if you you'll know when you hear it okay it's like that really synthesized vocal ad lib harmony that kind of just like appears and then disappears. That, ah. I'm trying to think of what Queen song would have had that. Jeez, I can't think of it right now. It reminds me of some certain Queen songs that had stuff like that. And it's, again, real interesting that they're doing it on a chord that just would not typically be in a K-pop song. Because it 
doesn't hit the sequence at all. And like the first part of this chorus too, it's the beat is extremely crunchy, but there is a certain melodicness to that top line that keeps it balanced out. Like it's not a hundred percent all crunchy where there's just no tonal quality whatsoever. Instead of like it, them balancing each other out, it almost feels like two forces competing against each other. And given the message of the song and how like kind of in general, like only one of music and that it's like talking about kind of like societal and cultural taboo in a way. And it's like combating that I think is really appropriate in the fact that these two elements of the song in reality don't really blend with each other. And that they're always in like constant conflict with each other. And I think that emphasizes the point of the song a little bit harder for me. Like something about the fact that how the song starts really crunchy and like really rhythmically. And that there really isn't much of a tonal quality to it. And then you get the pre-chorus which is like the kind of call and response in a way where it's the melodic, the more gentle, the more like comforting side of things. And then one, all of a sudden you get into the chorus and it's all out war between the two like rival factions, if you will. And I think that's so interesting from a compositional point of view as it tells the story in a different way. Like it doesn't tell the, the story through the lyrics. It doesn't tell the story through the music. It tells the story through the dissonance you get in within the music itself. That's really cool. I really like that. I just want to, I want to go back. And again, it's like now the melodic side is like taking from, oh, now it's the rhythm side now. Really interesting song. And I think that whole point of like it being like a musical form of conflict in a way wouldn't make sense had this song not been talking about what it's talking about. Welcome to Waffling Session. Class has begun and class is dismissed. That was. Ooh. I've always wondered, like, is my previous exposure to only one off before, like, kind of falling into, like, the whole, like, kind of wormhole with uh, Soul Drift? Like, was it last week or two weeks ago? Was Libido? I don't know what it was about that song that intrigued me, but I remember listening to it for the first time and thinking, what is this? And so I playlisted it. And still to this day, I still wonder, what is this song? What is it about it that makes it so interesting? And I think it is that whole thing of musical conflict in a way where I know it's thankfully becoming a little bit more normal for artists to talk about societal and cultural taboos. Like we're getting, especially in South, from the South Korean music scene where it is very traditional and like the public mindset is there's still a very large portion of it that's still kind of stuck in that like outdated traditional mindset in a way that there are artists like only one of who are not only of like tackling like societal and cultural issues like this and whether it be you know lgbtq issues or like interracial issues or whatever other st stories or like points that only one of her targeting that they are not only talking about it but that they aren't afraid to keep talking about them and i think that's the really important part about it 
And, you know, now we're getting more artists that are talking about stuff like this. Like, Yunjin from La Seraphim, her solo stuff's primarily been just about idol culture and how we're, like, she's showing us through her music, like, a dark side of idol culture or what she thinks idol culture needs to address more as an idol herself and like kind of like an inside scoop on what idol culture like the dark side of idol culture or you're getting groups that are lgbtq based like ga like holland like lionesses where they talk about things that they've like struggles they have experienced or things that they want to share out to the communities that might not get as much representation i think that's so cool and it's so powerful and all the props to only one off for continuing to do stuff like this because this isn't an easy thing to approach and they're making some really unique music to kind of portray their message and that's super cool as only one of has a very unique sound. They don't have a sound that anyone else does. And it's that uniqueness and the unique idea of attacking concepts like the ones they are. That's going to set them above all other groups for me. In that very special way. I might not like their music as much as other groups, but that's okay. Because ultimately, for me, I don't think only one of is doing it for the music. They're doing it for the message. And that's really powerful. And that's really important. And that's my rambling session. Thank you all for watching. Thank you again, Shannar, for the request. This was tremendous fun. And uh, in terms of timing, I'm watching this right before I'm doing the Soul Collection EP. So I'm very much looking forward to that as well. And hopefully only one of can just... Keep her, keep her going, as they used to say back in the uh, upper Midwest where I'm from. Keep her going was what they're doing because all, all, all power to them. This is, this is impressive stuff. But that's it for me today. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy and want to see more channel icon is up there, you can find the back catalog of stuff watched in the past. Drop a subscription if you want to keep up to date with whenever I upload new videos. And if you want to watch another video of mine right away, YouTube recommends you watch that video down there. And until next time, bye-bye.